Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to another night of Hope and Zion International Ministries prayer meeting. Uh, even though there might not be no praying right now, but we're going to get to that. First, we want to talk about a few things, but uh, I want to thank God, first of all, for you guys uh, tuning in to us again tonight. Uh, I thank God for another opportunity for us to uh, kind of talk and uh, kind of share a few things, uh, some wisdom from above. And uh, I'm really grateful that you guys are, are, are tuning in. Uh, uh, I want to uh, also uh, mention that today is me and my wife's 25th year anniversary. Praise God. I, 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 I truly thank him for it. You know, to get this far by faith, by faith, we got, we've gotten this far by faith. And uh, I appreciate that. And I want to tell her, you know, if she's listening, that, you know, I love her and I appreciate, appreciate her. I appreciate everything she's done, everything she's doing. And uh, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, move right on. And uh, we want to talk uh, for a minute from Paul uh, about principles of marriage how appropriate on my 25th anniversary we talk about principles of marriage let's go to uh if you have if you have your uh word which uh, is available let's go to uh paul's uh teaching the corinthians first corinthians uh chapter seven one through we're not going to do one through 40 probably one through 16. And uh, just just lay, lay down some groundwork. And, and it goes, now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations. Oh boy. Oh boy. I think I hit something there. Let me read that again. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. There we go, there we clarify some things. Now, what I'm saying is, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna have these relations for you to be married to one wife or to one husband. I just break it down a little bit. Now this this, this is very important in marriage. I know some of you guys saying or, or ladies saying, oh, you know, it ain't, it ain't gotta be all that. It ain't about that. <laughs> this is the word of God right here coming at you. This is the word of God coming at you. So, so and and, and it goes on to say, uh and, and three, verse three says, the husband should give his wife her conjugal rights. And likewise, the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body. I know I got to read that one one more again. It says the wife does not have authority over her own body when you are married ladies you do not have this is the word of god now you do not have rights over your own body when it comes down to your husband for the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband does that's the word of god the husband does likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body but the wife does same for you men i i, I don't know how many y'all have problems with this but it's not just men that's has a sexual appetite it's, it's not just us you have women out there that have pretty good appetites also sexually wise so 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 when we're married we do not have rights 
over our own bodies. That's very important to know, especially in a, in a marriage. Look, you don't talk about anything else. This, this the Bible don't doesn't even recognize girlfriend, boyfriend, and all that. If y'all if y'all find that, shoot it to me later on or something. But uh, I haven't seen it yet. I, I really don't think it's in here. Matter of fact, I know it's not in here. But this is very important in marriages today. I don't see or hear where it happened years ago. And I, like I said, I used to hang with a lot of old people. I, they don't seem to have had that problem. <laughs> I don't know exactly when it started, you know, where we thought we had control over our own bodies. But for some reason, these last few generations, people don't went crazy. You know what I'm saying? Denying their husband and denying their wives of, you know, their sexual pleasures. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. It's, I mean, you know, it's not about that. Uh, all right. So, so it also says, do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time, a limited time now, check out the agreement, that you may devote yourselves to prayer. There must be a lot of praying going on. I, I, I've talked to some friends and some family members that are married, and, and, and they, they, they happen to be in, in certain situations. So the only thing I can see, the only thing I can see is there must be a whole lot of praying going on. So, I hope God answers some prayers because if you're not taking care of your husband, if you're not taking care of your wife, then you must be doing a lot of praying because that's the only, the Bible says that's the only reason. That's the only excuse you have. And guess what? I don't know who you're praying to because if you pray, he don't know. He don't know if you're not praying to him. But if you're praying to him, trust me, you can believe you me that he's going to put it on your mind that you need to be doing what you need to be doing, taking care of your wife or taking care of your husband. It's, it's, it's no getting around it. It's, it's no getting around it. It, it, it. It's causing problems and marriages. It's it, it been going on for a while. And. You know, I know men get together, women get together, you know, probably talk about things, you know, and this this is something that can be eliminated. This is not even, with devil should be able to come up with something better than this. We, we shouldn't still be getting knocked down and kicked down and, 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 and stuff by this, this same issue. And when it clearly states in here that we don't even have rights of our own body. Me, <laughs> I ain't got a problem with it. I don't know about you, I ain't got a problem with it. I, by the grace of God, I ain't, I ain't got a problem with it. And, and you know what's real strange is? What's strange when it comes down, when it comes down to women. It, 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 if, you get, if you get tired to a point to where you're like, you know what, I give up. I give up. I give up, you know what, I, I give up. Don't worry about it. And you get to the point to where you, 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 you meditate and you're like, Lord, look, help me, you know. <laughs> get through this thing he gonna give you patience he gonna give you strength he gonna give you whatever you need for you to get through it and you know what the first thing gonna happen the wife gonna say what's wrong with you you ain't looked at me you ain't tried to touch me oh what the come on now make up your mind Make up your mind. You gonna do what the words say, or you not gonna do what the words say? There ain't no in between. Ain't no straddling the fence. You can't be lukewarm on this thing. This is a serious issue. Nobody want to talk about it. Church don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. You gotta go. You gotta go pay somebody money. You gotta go sit here and pay somebody a hundred, two hundred dollars an hour. A psychologist. A hundred, two hundred dollars an hour to give you the answer that the Lord gave you a long time ago. It's right here. It's free, 
But right along with your salvation. It was paid for by Jesus. You ain't paid for it. So it's free to you. But somebody had to pay for it. Your freedom. He died on Calvary's cross. He gave his life up. God gave his only begotten son that you had a right to, that you could have a right to the tree of life. So that was a payment made. It just wasn't by you. And this little bit of sacrifice right here, spending a little intimate time with your husband or your wife, is too much for the ask. It's too much to ask. You want everything, but you don't want to give up nothing. I'm not understanding what the problem is. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. So it says, if any man who has a husband who is an unbeliever and that consents to live with her, she should not divorce him for the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife. Thank God for Jesus. Woo, that's powerful, boy. That's powerful right there. I, I, I got to read that again. I got to read that one more time. Let's go to 12. He says, to the rest I say that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. For any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife. I thank God for Jesus. All right, all right. And the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Now you go. That's it right there. Look at that with that. You got no excuse. You got no way out. You got no way out of this thing. You got to, the truth is right in front of you. You got to either believe it or not. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such causes, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. For how do you know the wife? Whether you will save your husband by leading them to Christ. How do you know husband, whether you will save your wife by leading them to Christ? It all boils right back down to Christ, right back to Christ. Let, 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 let's talk about conjugal rights. It refers to mutual rights and privileges between two individuals arriving from the state of being married. It say these rights include mutual rights of uh, companionship, support, comfort, sexual relations, affection, joint property rights, and the like. It's, Paul's teaching on sex within marriage is extraordinary. He says that the husband and the wife should give one another their conjugal rights. 1 Corinthians 7 and 3. Read it when you get a chance. Each has a right to enjoy sex, and each has an obligation to help the other enjoy sex as well. Both spouses should receive joy and pleasure in a healthy sexual relationship. To all you men, all you women out there thinking that it's okay to keep denying or depriving your wives or your husband, better go read these verses. You better go read this whole chapter right here where Paul talks about marriage. Because if it haven't affected, at some point in time, it will affect your life, your marriage, your well being, your livelihood. It's going to have an effect on you if it hasn't already. And like I said, I talked to many guys I know that's married and a lot of them not. But this has been an issue, ongoing issue, something to talk about. I, I, I've talked about it with friends in the ballroom, 
talked about it at the barbershop. It's being talked about, I'm pretty sure, at the hair salon, at the nail salon. It's being talked about. Just ain't nobody doing nothing about it. Well, here's your chance to do something about it. Now that you know. The Bible say, you should hear the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Oh, yeah, they ain't running out. It's going to make you free. When it catch up with you, it's going to make you free. I hope it caught you tonight. I hope this word caught you tonight. And I hope somebody at some point in time is going to benefit or benefiting from it on tonight. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your peace, and your love. Father God, we thank you for all transportation that was given on today. We thank you, Father, for being God that sit high and look low. We thank you for your son Jesus who died on Calvary's cross, that we may even have rights to the tree of life. Father God, and we thank you for our marriage. We thank you for our spouses, be it husband or wife. We thank you for our kids. We thank you for the family, Father God. And we ask you to continually strengthen us and continually bond us together, Father God, that one can't fall without the other, and that we understand our relationship, that we seek you when we're trying to nurture our relationship, that we seek you when we're trying to grow our relationship, that we seek you when we're trying to bond in our relationship. We just thank you, Father. We thank you for the mercy. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for the grace that is efficient, Father God. Father God, we thank you for everything, Father God. We thank you for all those that teach in your word, Father God, that you continually strengthen them, Father God. Continually hide a word in all those hearts that they might not sin against you, Father God. Continually bring your people, Father God, to the house of prayer, Father God, where iron can sharpen iron, Father God, where you can send forth a word, Father God, that'll change people's lives, Father God. We just thank you today, Father God. We just love on you right now. We bless you, my Father. We ask him that you touch the president, Father God, and his cabinet. We ask you to touch the governors, the sinners, the senators, the counselors, Father God, all those that might be in committees, Father God, that's overseeing the legislature, Father God. We ask you to touch all of them, Father God. Touch them right now, Father God. Line them up, Father God, and have them do what you have them to do, Father God. Call them in, Father God. Call them in. Put them on notice, Father God, if they're not lining up, Father God. Father God, we know you have all power in your hand, Father God. We ask you to touch each and every uh, pastor, apostle, preacher, teacher, elder, Father God, deacon, Father God, uh, anyone that might be on the on a board, Father God, uh, concerning your, uh, your your worship center, Father God. We're asking you to touch those that are just sitting in the pews, Father God. We're asking you to touch all of them, Father God. Touch their hearts, their minds, their souls, Father God. Look over our grandparents, Father God, our parents, Father God, our kids, Father God. Watch over the schoolhouse, Father God. Visit the jails, the institution, Father God, the mental institution, Father God, and work your will, Father God. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you for being a one and mighty, only true and living God, Father God. And we bless you on tonight, Father God. We praise you in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God.